Madam Susan, you are a true friend of the crown. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. It is Sir Woke a lot, the new head of marketing for Bud Light. What, um, what is that? This beer has a complex woke flavor that's hard to identify. It's a bit nutty one day and kind of fruity the next. But trust me, you'll love it. Dilly dilly? Right? <laughs> Please follow Sir Brad. He's going to give you a private tour of the pit of misery. I'm sorry, what? Pit of misery! Dilly dilly! Dilly dilly! dilly. dilly. Well, 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 well. Some big, big news about this. Bud Light boycott that has been going on for over a month now and going strong. And in news that I never thought would actually come out because, as I've said before, you come out with news like this, alienate the left, say nothing, or if you, even if you say something, it might not be enough for the right or the moderates to come back to your brand. But this is a pretty big step here, so let's read it. Anheuser-Busch CEO finally disavows Dylan Mulvaney Bud Light partnership and says... It was not a campaign. After a firm sent a letter to retailers blaming an outside ad agency for approving it without management awareness as sales crash a whopping 26%. Now, I'm going to be honest here before I get into the article. I don't know if I really believe that. I don't know how an outside ad agency could come into your company and slip something by all the CEOs of this magnitude that they're making a commemorative can with Dylan Mulvaney's face on it, and somehow none of the higher-ups are aware of this. However, there's got to be something going on within the company because they put the VP of Marketing, uh, Alyssa Heinerschneid, she's on um, leave, uh, which is you know a nice way of saying she's been canned. Uh, her boss, I forget his name, Whitworth, I believe it was, he's also been axed, canned, or he's not, but he's also on leave for this mess-up. And their sales keep crashing to a whopping 26%. Like I said, I don't really know if I believe this. This seems a lot like blame shifting to me. But I think they're desperate at this point. They got to do something. People are not forgetting about this like they were hoping they were going to. And this is a very big win. And you know what? Hopefully we're going to see other companies like Nike, like Maybelline, follow suit with this. Because people do not want these woke identity politics inserted into their brands. So let's read on here what the CEOs have to say. CEO of Anheuser-Busch has unceremoniously disowned the disastrous Dylan Mulvaney stunt, insisting it was not a campaign, as a letter to retailers says it was just one can. Global boss uh, Michelle Dukaris, Dukaris addressed the mass backlash over working with uh, trans influencer Mulvaney 26 for the first time in all an earnings call with the investors on Thursday. And I, you know, they got to be panicking here. They got, this is like, uh, this is a Hail Mary pass here, folks. They are hoping that this is going to get them some of their customers back. And it might, but that remains to be seen. I still think there are going to be people out there who are never going to buy this brand again because they feel betrayed. And then we sat on this a month. People have been nonstop complaining about it. They want the company to make a statement. And it's taken a long time for this to happen. And like I said, it's not really even a statement. They're not like, listen, we messed up. They're like, no, 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 it was someone else's fault. Somebody outside our company that wasn't involved with us directly somehow just slipped this can in. Maybe it was just some guy who got hired in. He was working on the assembly line and he just you know, figured out how to do that. Of course, no, nobody knew about it. It was not our fault. Dukaris told investors there is misinformation spreading on social media about the company's team up with Mulvaney, according to Fox Business. Well, maybe if you had addressed this, you know, three, four weeks ago, there wouldn't be so much misinformation. It seems like to me they tried to ride out the storm and they found out this storm is not ending. And at least I guess they're at least they're saying something about it now, but it sounds a lot like blame shifting. Dukura said we need to clarify the facts that this was one camp, one influencer, one post, and not a campaign. Again, could have done that a month ago. We will continue to learn, meet the moment in time, all be stronger, and we work tirelessly to do what we do best bring people together over a beer and creating a future of more cheers. Okay, that's not a bad message. Investors were also told by Dukaris that Bud Light was trip, will triple its market, marketing spend this summer in a bid to woo customers back to the tarnished brand. Uh, that's a bold strategy, Cotton. I mean, let's see if it pays off for them. I, I, I guess they don't have anything else they can really do at this point. But that's, again, that's a Hail Mary play. I don't know if that's going to work. I'm sure we'll win some people back, but I, I don't think the majority of them. And, uh, you know, who knows if they're going to disavow Dylan Mulvaney, the small customer base they got from this push is probably going to leave. 
The disastrous marketing bid has been has seen sales from the American flagship beer plummet 26% despite Anheuser-Busch reporting first quarter earnings of $1.65 billion. Well, this came out April, which would be second quarter as far as I know. So, Ducura's comments came as a letter was sent to retailers, bars, and restaurants by Great Eagle, which distributes Anheuser-Busch products around St. Louis. It read, Anheuser-Busch did not intend to create controversy or make a political statement. In reality, the Bud Light can be Bud Light can posted by a social media influence that sparked all the conversation was provided by an outside agency without Anheuser-Busch management awareness or approval. Again, I, I really don't believe that, but I, I don't see how that would be possible. Who, uh, nobody's overseeing any of this stuff. I, I, don't, I don't really buy that. Since that time, the lack of oversight and control over marketing decision has been addressed and a new VP of Bud Light marketing has been announced. Well, that's good. Uh, Bud Light's VP of Marketing, Alyssa Heinerstein, took a leave of absence while the VP of Mainstream Brand, Daniel Blake, stepped down some days after. Oh, it's Daniel Blake. I think Whitworth might have been their CEO. Sorry, I got those names confused. Their sudden departure appears premature in light of the recent comments, which also claim there was no management awareness of the now infamous campaign. Well, then you really better, I mean, if that's true, and again, I don't believe that, you really better have an overhaul of, you know, your whole corporate space because that's ridiculous. But I don't really believe that. I think this is just an excuse. This is pandering. This is a way to say, oh, it's not really our fault. But still, this is, this is a huge win. This is a big step here. The specifics of how the can fiasco erupts remain under wraps, which that'd be very interesting to know. I wonder how long it'll take them to craft that narrative. The latest letter claims that the Mulvaney can was the brainchild of an outside agency. Again, but it went through your, uh, it went through your company. You distributed it. It is the first time the brewing giant has addressed the backlash in detail after they were hit with a major dip in Bud Light sales following the paid partnership. And as you can see here, yeah, I, I put this on a graph or one of my thumbnails yesterday. Bud down 26. Uh, Coors and Miller Lite both up 13%. Good for them. The defiant rebuttal against the unofficial campaign comes as Anheuser-Busch reported first quarter earnings of $1.65 billion, which topped Wall Street expectations. We'll see how it is next quarter. The brewer posted a revenue of $14.21 billion in the period, which also beat forecasts with the shares rising 6% since the beginning of the year and 12% in 12 months. Again, that does not account for what started in April. It's unclear if the boycott had any impact on these figures. It wouldn't have, uh, because that would be the second quarter, I believe. And whether a larger impact on the firm's finances will be visible in the second quarter of the financial year if the controversy and boycotts rumble on. Uh, and I guarantee they will. Despite the company's attempts to disavow the connection, the video Mulvaney26 posted of herself drinking Bud Light at the start of April 23 used the hashtag Bud Light Partner. Uh, again, yeah, that's another uh, thing that kind of destroys your narrative here. I don't, and that, that could have been an independent choice by Mulvaney, but I doubt it. It implies that she was paid for the partnership despite the brewing giants now claiming that the beer can and social media posts were not meant to be for production or sale to the gen general public. Well, then you never should have done it in the first place. Bad marketing stunt, and I'm glad they're suffering the consequences for it. I'm glad they're actually speaking out about this. I never thought they would actually do that, but I think it's too little too late. It's been over a month. People are sick of this, and the only reason they're doing it now, I would imagine, is because they're down 26%, and they're desperate. They, this silence thing that they've tried for the past month has not worked out. However, I do think this is a big win, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Is this enough? Will you forgive them? Are you going to buy a Bud Light product again? Personally, I don't think I will. But again, I'm not a big bud drinker to begin with. Anyway, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I'd really be interested about your takes on it. Thank you for listening this long, and I will catch you on the next one. Later.